Thank you for joining us in worship today and joining our church in the family of God. Pastor Joe is going to bring a word here in just a moment, and I'm going to pray before that happens. Dear Jesus, we are so grateful that your spirit is in this place, that your spirit has come into our homes and blessed us this morning. God, I pray that your spirit would help us to understand the word of God, that we would not walk out of this place the same, that we would walk out changed and transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Here's Pastor Joe this morning. I want to draw your attention to a very familiar story today. It's found in the book of John chapter 4. That's where we're going to head. John chapter 4. It's the story of the woman at the well. This morning, I, this week, I was talking with someone about that. And, and uh, I, they asked, well, what are you talking on Sunday, Pastor? I said, the woman at the well. And he says, I've never heard that one. Did she fall in the well? Did she um, ha- have a... Uh, did, did, did something happen at the well? I said, you just got to come and find out. So I'm praying that person's here. This, he's not here this service, but I hope, pray that they're there today. Uh, we're going to talk about this story because there's a lot of different angles. There's a lot of different things, so much that you could glean from this story. Um, you've got the angle of divine appointments, that God sets everything up on purpose. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, that God moves in such a way that He gives us divine appointments if we're looking for them. The second angle you have is another angle of caring for those who would have been considered an enemy. Jews and Samaritans, they didn't exactly see eye to eye on things. Uh, They they believed in the same God, but they worshipped Him in different ways, and and they didn't see eye to eye, and and a lot of times they would be considered as enemies of one another. They they didn't get along. And, And when Jesus tells the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan to a Jewish audience, that would have brought some gasps in the room. Because this this Jew who was hurt by the side of the road and and all of these uh, people that should have helped him, the Levite, the priest, those people passed by on the other side, but it was a Samaritan that helped him and that would have been like, what? They did not exactly see eye to eye. Well, here you have this woman who's a Samaritan who is, and they're actually in Samaria. We're going to read this text in just a moment, but today I want to speak to you on the thought of this story that maybe you haven't heard about, that this is a story about vision. This is a story about vision. It's a story about what we see. You know, many of you may have noticed that when you get older, your vision sometimes gets worse. I have noticed this in my, wife, in my life. I, I almost said my wife. That would have been bad. Um, but I, I've noticed this in my life. I, we were at a restaurant this week, and, and I'm reading a, a menu, and, and well, I'm trying to read the menu. And as long as the font is big, I'm doing good. But when they start explaining things, and, and for somebody like me, I need the explanation. Because the big headline says hamburger, but underneath it says lots of onions. Right? So I need the explanations. And so I'm, I'm looking at this menu and, and I can read all the headlines, but everything's kind of blur. And I'm like, honey, I guess I'm going to have to start having you carry my glasses in your purse. Notice the pride element in that. I'm not going to carry them myself, but I'm going to have you carry my glasses in your purse and hand them to me when I need them, right? We get to that place. And, and how many of you know when you get your eyes examined, you sit in the chair and, and they, they have you look through this, this uh, thing, this lens thing, and it says, okay, which one's better, A or B? And then they flip it up. How about now? A or B? And they just, and at the BMV, one of the things that's interesting for me, when you renew your driver's license, the first thing is you've got to press your head on there and try to read as you're pressing your head. That's trying to do two things at once. And I, I don't, some of us struggle with that. Um, and so I'll push my head up there, and they'll say, read line item number four, line number four. And I'm pushing my head up there, and then I kind of have to look, you know, for me, I have this problem. I can see the clock on the wall back there, all the numbers, but I can't see what's right here. And so when I get to that B and V thing, see, my Bible, I usually have to put out here to read. So read line item number four. I've got to back up from the thing to read it, and when I back up, the light goes out. 
and I can't see it. So then I'm pressing in, and I'm like, okay, Lord, please help me right here. Why not at number four? Have you ever closed one eye to read it? Shh, that's our little secret, okay? You close one eye, and then you close the other eye. But it's vision. Vision. And today I want to give you a couple thoughts on this story. Let's begin reading this. It's going to take a little bit. We're going to read through this entire story. So be patient with us. It's in first. It's in uh, John. It's in the Gospel of John, chapter four, verse one. So now, when the Lord learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Now it was necessary that he go through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being exhausted from his journey, sat down by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. A woman from, of Samaria came there to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a woman of Samaria, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was and who it is who was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself along with his sons and his livestock? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. Indeed, the water that I shall give him will become in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not thirst nor come here to draw. And he said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. So you have spoken truthfully. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you all say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming. Neither, when, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We, worship, we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Yet the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I am. I, I who you speak to you am He. We'll pause right there. We'll come back and get this in just a moment. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would just allow us to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. God, we want to have eyes to see. We want to have your vision, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a few thoughts that I want to give today regarding this story. And, and the first one is this. Jesus sees this woman. I believe that when the Bible says that it was necessary that he go through Samaria, um, obviously, yes. If you looked at a, a map of the area of that time, Judea was down south. You had to go through Samaria for the most direct route to get to Galilee. You would have had to go right through the middle of Samaria. I get that. I understand that in the, in the grand scheme of point A to point B to get from where he was to where he was going. But I want to also believe this. I believe that there was necessary for him to come to this particular city at this particular time. It was necessary for him to be right there at that well, at the sixth hour, at that time. His disciples were off getting some food. They were getting supplies. And Jesus has this appointment that he's going to sit down at this well to take a breather. He's exhausted. He's been ministering. He's been going from town to town. And, and they've come to the place where he's physically exhausted. And, 
And I want to just ask a question here because I think this is also relevant to our story today about vision and seeing people. How often and how many times do we let exhaustion be an excuse for us not seeing hurting people? Man, I'm just so tired. I just, I can't focus. I, I, I can't... I can't understand. I'm not hearing well, not seeing well. Exhaustion being the thing that so many times when we get exhausted, all of our body wants to do shut down. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or experienced that or not. When you become physically exhausted, your body has a tendency to want to shut down. Things don't seem as important as they once were. You don't need to go out and do the things that, oh man, that, that can wait. Have you ever said that? I can wait till late. I'm too tired. And I think sometimes in our exhaustion, we use that as an excuse to not see people. This lady, she was hurting. This lady was damaged goods. How do I know that? Because, well, for starters, she'd been married five times. And the guy that she was with currently was not her husband. That tells me that this woman had been relationally broken for many years, maybe even most of her whole entire life. She had had people let her down. Relationship had been brutal in her life. She would bounce from one bad marriage to another bad marriage. One bad relationship to another bad relationship. And that's, she's, she's coming to this well and she's hurting. And, you know, I just imagine... That probably her entire life has been this way. You may not know that by looking at her appearance. She may have had a a very good physical appearance, but Jesus teaches us a lesson about listening to the Holy Spirit and looking beyond a physical appearance and looking to someone's heart. We tend to be people that make assumptions about people based on what we see, don't we? Like it or not, we all do that. It's like the commercial. Have you ever seen the commercial? I think it's a, either a Geico or Progressive commercial. I'm not sure. Where they're, you're going to become like your parents. Have you seen that one? And they're in the hardware store, and the guy walks by with blue hair, and he goes, everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. And th- those guys are oh, 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 it's blue. Right, right? You know, we judge by appearance. We look at appearance. I just wonder, how many people do we miss in the course of a day, in the course of a week, because we aren't looking, because it's not obvious? Jesus sees this woman. Another thing I find that's interesting about this woman is this woman has some religious background. She has some kind of religious background. She understands the social mores of the day. She understands the Samaritan viewpoint of God. Right? She connects the dots with Jacob in this well. She has just enough religion in her life to know what was according to be taught by the people of Samaria and know that it was different from the people of Jews. Maybe she'd been to church at one point or another. (laughs) Maybe she even knows enough of some things, that, but maybe she didn't really adhere to much of the teachings, but she knew. After all, this is someone who had five husbands and again, another person that's not her husband that she's with right now. I I found that a lot of people, I don't know if you've experienced this in the community, but a lot of people have a knowledge of God. But sometimes it's a skewed knowledge about God. It's a skewed knowledge about church. It's a skewed knowledge about being a disciple of Jesus. And sometimes those people are in our community and sometimes they sit in a pew. Hmm. It's quiet in here. We know just enough to make us feel okay about ourselves. But all the while, we still live in the pain. We still live in the hurt. We still live in the bad choices and decisions. We still live in the broken relationships. We still live with the addictions. We're really wanting something, someone to come and see. Somebody come and show up and see us. But no one seems to be looking. 
The vision is blurred by our own stuff and our own sin and we can't see people because they're right in front of us. I believe that's one thing that Jesus is talking to us about. He sees this woman. He sees her. The only thing this woman came up to do was to get water. She didn't come up to get a sermon. She didn't come up to get any kind of uh, thing that there was no expectation. She comes, the expectation was, I'm going to put this pot in this well and I'm going to pull out water. That was it. But Jesus saw more. Jesus saw more. The second thing I, I notice about this thought process is this. Jesus gives a vision exam. I want to continue reading here if we could. Uh, verse 27, Then his disciples came, they marveled at, at he talked with this woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman let, then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They went out of the city and came to him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have no food. I have food to eat, of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, Has someone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. You do not say there is yet four months and then comes the harvest. Listen. I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit that leads to eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this is the saying true, one sows and another reaps, yet I sent you to reap a crop for which you did not labor, and you have benefited from their labor. I find it interesting here. For years, I, I don't know why, you know, in reading this, this passage this week, but for years I had separated these two instances. But really, they need to be joined together. Because Jesus is telling His disciples, His disciples came back with the food. They came back with the supplies. They're urging Jesus to eat. And then all of a sudden, He gives them a teaching moment. And he tells them to look around at the harvest. He's saying this, listen guys, I understand that you're concerned about the physical things. I understand that we sent you to get supplies. But I also want you to understand that this woman is the reason why I came. And you need to see people. For years I disconnected this as a teaching moment that was separate. But it is actually intertwined with this woman at the well. Because it is something that Jesus is telling his disciples. He says, listen, you are missing it right now. The fields are white. that are ripe under harvest. And you're so concerned with all the other menial things that you have missed it. Listen. See. I think the problem with them is like the problem that I is with us. They weren't looking. The woman probably represented most of the people in her village. She was broken. She was hurting. She was lost. At this point, these disciples, they hadn't been with Jesus so long. So I believe He's telling them, listen, I want to give you a vision test. I want you to understand what's important in here. This is the most important thing that you can do. What you de- you see, this is the point. What you deem important in your life is what you'll see the most clearly. Don't miss that. What you deem is the most important thing in your life is the thing that you will see the most clearly. If you deem it that's your job, if it's, you deem it that's your stuff, your house, man, the list can go on and on. That's what you'll see the most clearly. Jesus challenges them and and challenges us today that sometimes we get our priorities kind of out of whack. And when we do that, we have vision for the wrong things. What are you seeing? I I don't know, maybe you're not like this, but when I go to the store, um, whether I'm sent by my wife or I go for myself, I typically go because I'm on a mission. And the mission is to find the thing that I want and to get out of the store. That's my mission. And to do it as quickly and as expeditiously as I possibly can. Find my thing and get out, right? And so in doing that, what do we get? I usually get this tunnel vision. 
Okay, I know where this thing is. They even Walmart even has an app now. Have you caught that? You can search the app and it tells you what aisle it's in. Whew, somebody was, that's genius. I don't even have to search anymore. I can just pull it up and go. And I, you get that and you get tunnel vision and I don't see anything else. And to be honest, we don't really want to see anything else. Let me pick up this prescription and get out of there. But you see, my wife isn't necessarily that way. I see the thing I want. I see the price I want it for. I pick it up and I'm heading to the checkout. My wife will look at each box. She'll examine all the ingredients. She'll make sure that it's what we want. She'll price check it with every other item. It takes about a three to five minute process. Nothing wrong with that. That's just not typically how I roll. But when we are caught up in doing things, sometimes we get to the place where we have tunnel vision is what I'm getting at. We don't see everything around. We don't see the big picture. We have tunnel vision. And sometimes I think we miss the Holy Spirit's call to see someone differently. Because what's important to us at the time is what's right in front of us. And we're missing opportunity all around us to see. We often fail to see, him, to see what we deem as unimportant. If you're concerned about your schedule, if you're concerned about your time, then you're probably going to walk right past someone that maybe they just needed a simple hello. Maybe they just needed a smile or perhaps a minute of your time. Why? Because you failed to see. You failed to see. It becomes sad when the Holy Spirit tries to speak to our heart about doing certain things and speaking to certain people, but because we're not looking for that opportunity, we let it pass by. Jesus wanted His disciples to learn to set their priority on people and to have a vision to see past a physical appearance of things. And to see what the need was. Finally, the last thing I have in this is this. This woman also gets a vision. This woman also gets a vision. In verse 39, it says, Many of the Samaritans at the city of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me all that I'd ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to remain with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we have heard ourselves and we know that this man is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. The Bible says that she left her water pot and went into the city. She left the reason why she came and she went into the city. She was so changed that the very thing that she originally set out to do, she didn't get done. And then check out what happens. She goes and tells the people in her town what had happened to her and who she'd met. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed in Jesus because of the word of the testimony of this woman. Because Jesus had opened her eyes to see. He'd given her a word about her life. And then she believed that He was who He said He was. If you turn back a couple chapters in the book of John, you'll find a, a story about uh, Jesus is calling disciples, and there's one named Philip. Philip is called by the Lord, and he goes and he finds his friend Nathaniel. Um, and, and, and he's talking to Nathaniel. He says, listen, I found, I found the one. I found the guy. And Nathaniel says this, can, can anything come from Nazareth? And I, I think there's an invitation that Philip gives that's pretty similar to one that this woman would give. And, and the thought process is this. Philip replies, come and see. Come and see. I believe it's the same invitation that we are to give today to the one who's hurting, to the one that's broken, to the one that's damaged goods. Come and see. Can I just be honest with you? You all have something to share. If you've accepted Christ in your life, if you're a believer today, you have something to share. And the invitation that goes along with that testimony is just simply this. Come and see. See. Come and see. This is who I used to be, but then I met Jesus. Can anything good come from church? Can anything good come from my life? Can God forgive me for what I've done? Well, let me tell you what God's done in me. And then I'm just going to invite you to 
come and see. That's the eye exam. See the fields that are ripe. See people that are broken, that are damaged. See with eyes that are anointed by the Holy Spirit to look past outward appearances and look to the heart. And we've been studying spiritual gifts on Wednesday night and um, a few weeks back, and those gifts are to be used for this purpose, for the come and see purpose. So that when you're obedient to the Spirit's leading, God will use you in such a way that when you see what He wants you to see, He might give you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. He might do something as, as you're talking to someone and give you something that they need for that day. He's going to follow through if you're willing to step out. Catch the vision and see what God's speaking to your heart. And see what's around you. Before we pray today, I just want to ask this question. How are your spiritual eyes today? How are your spiritual eyes today? And I want you to take an exam. I want you to take an eye exam. That's what he basically gave to the disciples. The disciples were so concerned about food. Has he eaten? Did did you eat something? You, You need to eat something. And Jesus says, listen, I'll eat later. I need you to see this moment. I need you to see that the fields are ripe. And I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying that same thing to us. Whether that be here in Byesville, whether that be in this community, whether that be in another state, wherever that is around the world, we as the church of Jesus Christ need to understand that the fields are white and they're ripe for harvest. The question is, do you see it? Do you see it? Father, today I pray Open up our eyes, God, that we might see. Open up our eyes, God, that we can see what you want us to see. This morning, I I prayed about how it felt like the Holy Spirit wanted us to close this message today. And and here's how I'd I'd like for us to do that. That's how I feel like the Lord is wanting us to do. If you would stand with me today. And this morning, if if that's the passion of your heart, that you want to be someone that sees people the way Jesus sees people. You want to have His kind of vision. You want to have His kind of sight in this. To not just fly through life and get to the end. But you want to actually be a vessel that God can use to minister to people to see people the way He sees people. If that's you today, as we pray this prayer, would you just say, yeah, Lord, check my vision. Change my heart. Give me my spiritual glasses that I need so that I can see people. If you'd raise your hands and say that to the Lord today as we pray, I believe God can do that in your heart. So, Father, this morning, I ask for those that have their hands raised, God, today, God, we've submitted to the eye exam, and Lord, we need and we want to have your spiritual eyes that we can see those that are hurting, those that are damaged. God, they don't always show it with outward expression, but God, sometimes when the Spirit of the Lord hits us, we need to be able to see so that we can see differently that the fields are ripe unto harvest. Help us, God, to see with your eyes, I pray. To fulfill what you've called us to do. To touch the lives of people. At the bottom line, God, that's the main reason of why the church exists. That's the reason why you set it up. was so that we would reach lost people and bring them into the bride of Christ. Yeah, there are other things. We worship together. We give instruction together. We fellowship together. All of those things are important. But God, if we miss this, if we miss the fact of listening to the Holy Spirit in our life, God, the other things aren't going to be complete either. So God, I pray, help us to have vision. Vision for You vision for people. 
love for you and love for people. Cultivate that in our heart, God. Let this scripture text that we've read today echo in our mind that the fields are ripe. The fields are ripe. The fields are ripe. I've got to look. I've got to be looking. I pray, God, today, help us, God, to reach the lost, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Keep your eyes open.